First things first, let's go ahead and clock into the system. You can see that there's, uh, this is the screen that's going to be, it's, it's basically the login screen. This is what's going to greet you when you turn on the system. So you can actually access the manager functions from here as well and type in your password and cashier ID. Or just to clock in like we were discussing, there's that little clock down there and we're going to put in our password and our ID. And you can access the keyboard here as well. I apologize that I didn't do that just now. But definitely, we're going to clock in. Clock in successful, and we're done. So that's one way to clock in, okay? Let's actually do this now. Logging into the system. Okay, we're greeted with this uh, home screen again. So let's, this is another space to go ahead and clock in. We're in the cashier screen. And you also can press the number one here or the letter C uh, to actually arrive at this. So we're gonna put in this again, and we can clock out clock out successful, it's going to close down, and it's going to go back to this screen. So that's how you clock in and out. Now let's apply a discount to the invoice. Let's grab something that we already have in inventory. This is going to be my prop for the day. All right, and you see that the Diet Cola came up, and that's the item that we have in inventory. Now let's apply a discount to this invoice. So we're going to go to Options, Invoice Properties, Discount, and we're going to give it a 10% discount. And you see that the discount was applied, 10%. And now we, all we have to do to be able to redeem that discount is pay for it. We'll say exact, exact change. To save paper, we're not going to print a receipt. Cash drawer pops. Cash goes in into the drawer, and that's how you do a discount. Now, let's process a return. We're going to use the same exact uh, order that we just used. And you see there's a barcode right here on the bottom, okay? Now, all you have to do is, and now you can look it up. Now, the, I just want to give you an idea that there is an invoice number here, and you can look it up by invoice number. It is going to be so much faster, though, uh, to look it up by receipt. But we know that some people lose their receipts, and that just depends on your basic business model about what you'll accept. So the invoice number down here is also printed. But let's go ahead and populate the uh, the invoice here up on the screen and we can actually return the items pull back the invoice or display the invoice and let's actually just return the item and now you see there's going to be a bunch of items here that we can actually choose an individual item to take a return on and since there was only one item on this one let's go ahead and click that we'll select that item and you can see that we're going to process a return here and here's all the negative values so let's just close that out and we're going to pay cash since they paid with cash and yes, we do want a receipt for this individual. Give them the receipt, and that's how you process a return. Let's look at how to actually do a no sale and just pop the drawer. Now, the thing about it is you do have an individual login, okay? And that is uh, per PCI compliance, that if you're going to process credit cards within the system, that you do need to have an individual login. So that's just a reminder. But since we are individually logged in here, we actually have report tracking that can tell you when a no sale has occurred or a void has occurred or anything of the like. So let's actually process a no sale, you know, make some change for somebody and see how that happens, okay? So what we're going to do, we have our home screen, we're going to go to options, open cash drawer, drawer pops, we're going to make our change, and we're going to close the drawer, exit, and we're done. A great part of this software is being able to put items on hold and to recall them. So let's actually put a couple of things on hold. I want to show you a couple features. But basically, this feature is used when, let's say, you have a line of people, and you have the next person that comes up has a handful of items. They ring them all up, and you realize, wow, they forgot their wallet. So you want to put it on hold, let them go grab their wallet, ring in some more people, let that other person come back and pay for the item. So let's run through that, okay? We're going to use our prop. So we're going to ring in a couple of these. Let's add a couple in here, and let's just add something else. All right, so we've rung in all the items. Oh, wow, I forgot my wallet. So what we're going to do is we're going to place that item on hold. Now, we can give it an ID and say, sir, what's your name? His name is Jim. So we're actually going to put that on hold. We can go through and start ringing in another item, and you see the invoice is populating for another item. We can go ahead and pay. That person is going to pay with cash. Let's not take a receipt this time. Okay, that person's through the line. The line of people is done, and now what we can do is we can press this button, Fetch on Hold, 
and you can also press Control H. But look at all this room that we have here. If you have two or three things happen like that, um, and, and there's a variety of other uses that you can just be creative and use this, but they need to be closed out by the end of the day. But you can see that right here we have those on hold. So if somebody's going to pick something up later in the day, you can put that on hold for as long as you need, but it does need to be closed out by the end of the day. So let's select that right there. And you see his invoice is here. We're going to go ahead and pay. He's going to pay with cash. And no, we're not going to have a receipt. So now you can see uh, the change due is going to show and all these other things are going to happen to give you the ability to put items on hold in a very convenient way. Let's talk about item searchability, okay? I'm going to show you the search feature, but first I actually want to show you how to just do a price check, okay? So we'll grab our prop, we'll go to options, and you can see right here in the dead center we have price check. So let's go ahead and scan this item, and you see right here, price check, $2.13. Very easy, okay? Now let's actually search for this item. We can actually, this is, this is a screen that you're going to see quite a lot, okay? So you can look for modifiers, you can look for choice items, kits, rentals, all of these different things that we're going to discuss. And we can also look by department. So I know what department this is in, so we can look by that department. And let's do that. And you can see right here, okay, uh, Diet Cola, right there. So let's go ahead and select that, and we'll pull that up. So it's very easy to search those items. The other thing that we can do, and let's go ahead and void this out so we can see it. Let's go ahead and scan the barcode, and you can do a quick price check that way. You just have to void out that specific item. So it's very easy to search for items. And again, you can always just search that way. But sometimes you're not going to have either. Maybe you have a broken uh, barcode, or you have something that's going to hinder you from being able to do that. So I just wanted you to see that there's a, a variety of ways to search for items. Let's take just a minute and talk about taking payments, okay? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a quick item to the invoice. And let's go ahead and pay it. Now, we can actually clear this number and input anything that we want. $50. As you can see, these are right here as well. And this uh, next even amount, uh, the next dollar amount up is going to be right there. So then you can pay with cash. And now let's talk about external credit card right there. This actually means that it, if you have external credit card here, that means you're going to pay with a credit card, but you're actually going to take payment or swipe the card on an external terminal. Now, this is going to feel like you're doing double entry, well, really because you are. This side in the POS is for reporting. This is actually taking payment on the external terminal. But you can actually process internally, but then we actually get into more of a PCI compliance um, expansion because we're actually going to be on a computer processing payment, and we really need to protect that cardholder data. So you're going to have to do it with this, this external machine and have other processes within your business. But the other thing that we want to talk about is that we need to have a firewall. We need to have other specific security settings like antivirus and things like that to actually arrive at a place of PCI compliance within the computer. Now, this software is PCI compliant, and it doesn't store credit, credit card data, et cetera. But what I want you to know is the fact that we need to, to be very cognizant of PCI compliance. We also can take checks. We're going to get to gift cards in just a second, but I wanted you to see this is where you're going to take payment on a gift card. Now, on account and layaway, those are two specific things that I'd like to discuss. These are relationships between customers and, and your business that have very distinctive differences. If you're going to pay something on account, you, you, know, you have to create the customer, and we'll show you how to do that in customer maintenance and activate their account. Now, Paying on account means they're going to give you a deposit or just basically take the item today and pay for it later. They're not going to pay for all of it at this point. They're going to pay for it later. Layaway is very different. They're actually going to stake a claim on the item, and it's going to stay held. So basically, you can't release the item to the customer using the layaway function. It won't deplete it from inventory. It won't actually process that payment. So you can see the distinct differences. On account, they're going to take it today. Layaway, they're going to take it at another time. So those are going to be payment processing options that we can take. Now, deposits, et cetera, we can force deposits on those different kinds of things. But I just wanted to give you a quick explanation of those. Then we have debit here. And that pretty much covers the, uh, the tender screen. So let's actually go and look at payment processing. So we're going to cancel out of here. We're going to actually void this invoice. And then let's go to options. We're going to go to setup. And then we're going to go to setup screen. And then we're going to go to payment processing. Now, you see all of these individual items right here. We have credit, debit. And these are all of the processors that are going to be able to be used within the credit debit function right here. These all have gateways. So you see Express Manual right here. 
Express manual is when you're going to use an individual terminal, okay? An external terminal. Now, let's talk about manual. Manual means that you actually, if you have this setting for credit debit, you have to actually manually input all of that information into the system. Then you have all of these gateways right here that have already been built conveniently by PC America into the Cash Register Express Sense system. That you have Chase Payment Tech, CoCard, First Data, and they're always putting new people in here, but these are the big boys that are playing in the game right now. Mercury Payments is a big one, and you can see that we have PC Charge right here. Now, anytime you click on one of those gateways, it's going to have all of the parameters right here that are going to give you the indication uh, of what the setup information is going to require. So, what you have to ask your credit card processor is give me a parameter sheet, a setup sheet. That's the language to tell them and say, okay, I need that sheet. And when they give it to you, you can put it all in here. Now, we will do this for you as well because it is a little bit difficult and requirements for testing and things like that. But definitely, you can do it on your own. And all you have to do is fill in the blanks with the merchant ID, the terminal ID, and all these different things. And you can see that it's going to fit right in here. And then we also have these other options here. Now, browse these because you can actually do pre authorizations of credit cards if you're actually going to, you know, somebody's going to stay for a while. Let's say you're a bar and you actually want to use this software. You know, you can pre authorize a credit card, et cetera. So I wanted you to see all these diff different things right here. Like like batch size and all that. And then let's go over to um, uh, check and you can see that this is the payment processor for actual, uh, actually processing checks electronically. And these are the guys that are gonna be able to do that. And then we have EBT. EBT is electronic bank transfer, okay? And these are the processors that are gonna be able to do that. And you see a few of them in here that are gonna be able to do that. Then we have a gift card program, okay? All of these guys are gonna have specific gift card programs. And one tip I'd like to give you is about Mercury. Now, Mercury payment systems, they don't charge pretty much anything of what the other people are gonna charge you to process gift cards. So it's actually a, a pretty huge benefit to use them. And then we have customer loyalty and again, uh, Mercury Payments is, is going to be the only company that is going to be, be able to give you that benefit. So you see that they're the only ones that actually have an onboard customer loyalty program. So I wanted you to see that. Now, there's a lot of other stuff within the setup screen, and we'll actually get to that as we cover other specific portions of the software, but that is taking payments.